Good evening. Sometimes a reporter like myself wonders if our politicians know what is going on. So today, bearing in mind there are about 10,000 people in Vancouver who test positively for the AIDS virus, I made special arrangements to see Premier Van der Zandt. But first, here's Ted with the rundown. Peter Pocklington, owner of the Oilers and Gainers, admired for his hockey team and criticized for his heavy-handed approach to labor. Webster grills the pock on labor, politics, and what's in store for Western Canada's economy. Will Vancouver teens soon be learning about AIDS and condoms in schools? Dr. John Blatherwick, the city's medical health officer, says he's not backing down on his plan, despite objections from the Premier. He's coming up with Webster. But will educating teens about AIDS and condoms promote promiscuity? That's one of the big fears of Premier van der Zam. He's against Dr. Blatherwick's plan, and he's up first with Webster. I can see a great battle, media encouraged battle, shaping up in British Columbia on a couple of moral issues. First of all, the Van der Zand government put its views into the hopper on abortion. I can see that fight about clinics going on endlessly one way or another. Now I see another one. Public health officials who appear to disagree with the Premier Van der Zand. So I interrupted Premier Van der Zam in downtown Vancouver today to say, Mr. Van der Zam, I think that we've got to establish some of your, you and your government's attitudes to this incredible crisis we face in the explosion of AIDS. Do you appreciate how bad this epidemic is and probably will become in the next five, ten years in British Columbia? It's a very serious problem, and I hope it can be curbed very quickly. Uh, because, you know, we've had 100 people die already, we've another 100 dying, we've got hundreds and hundreds infected with a positive virus. Now, do, do your principles prevent you from endorsing the widest possible public education about AIDS, which kills? No, I have no, I don't object to that at all. Will you assist in that education of the public at all levels about AIDS and the need for everyone to know about it. I would prefer to assist because that way we can assure that it's provided properly and presented properly. Now, do you realize that at the moment in Vancouver schools, people from AIDS Vancouver are demonstrating with model items the use of condoms to school children. Does that offend you? Terribly so. Uh, I uh, only learned about it just now and I intend to pursue this to find out what in fact is happening and uh, yes, we'll take some action in that regard. But surely with today's broad moral standards, much looser than they were perhaps 50 years ago, it's essential that teenagers, if not children, be fully informed about safe sexual practices. No, I think perhaps we certainly must do all we can to assure them uh, how to avoid contacting the disease and uh, what this, the seriousness of this disease, uh, but uh, not to uh, teach them how to have safe sex. That's not our role. But I don't think anyone is trying to teach them how to have, in the schools anyway, how to have safe sex. The, surely the, the thrust must be to teach them that if you contact AIDS, it's a fatal illness. I appreciate that, and I'm fully with you on that. If that's our goal, and if that's how we approach it, we can do a great deal. If, on the, on the other hand, we get off on the wrong course, such as you suggest is happening in some of the Vancouver schools now, uh, then uh, I think we'll destroy what it is we're setting out to do. Well, it looks like there's a battle shaping up between you and some public health officers who are very anxious because of the fact that sex takes place. And you are not going to cure AIDS by abstinence, are you? Yes, you would. Is that if a practical answer? It's perhaps not a practical answer, but it's certainly something that we can work towards. Uh, I think if somehow we can diminish and, and, and influence society locally, 
where it is our responsibility in a way so that there's less promiscuity, obviously then we'd be accomplishing just exactly what it is that you and I both want to see accomplished. So what precisely do you, do you don't object to sex education in schools, do you? No, and I think, again, it's very important as to how it's presented. If it's a matter of uh, uh, warning and teaching about the dangers of promiscuity and what it brings, that's one thing. If, on the other hand, it's teaching how to have sex or how to best have sex, then obviously we're on the wrong track. Well, but supposing it says, and I mean, in the United States, the Surgeon General wants to stop this in grade five. There are between a million and three million people infected with the virus there. We've got 800 acute cases in Canada. Supposing what must be told to people when they reach sexual activity is that they can avoid catching AIDS if they use a condom. Now, there can be no objection to that to sexually active groups, can there? I think that's the wrong approach. Uh, certainly, I suppose, in the presentation, that could come about. But that's not where the emphasis ought to be. Uh, the emphasis ought to be, uh, you know, if you don't want AIDS, uh, there's things you don't do and there's people you don't mix with. And if that's the sort of message and it's properly presented, I think it can be a benefit. And incidentally, we don't have to necessarily learn from the U.S. If we see what's happened down there, it's not a place to always uh, take a lesson from. But we've got a West End of Vancouver with hundreds of cases of positive AIDS. West End of Vancouver. Surely you're not being practical when you say abstinence uh, is the only real answer. Well, uh, I'm not saying it's the only, it certainly would be the answer if somehow we could accomplish that, and I guess we have to set a high goal and work towards that. But obviously, too, there needs to be other information provided to them. It's all a matter of how it's approached and how it's presented. But you're obviously offended by the use of condoms in classrooms in Vancouver. Would Very you plan much. to take any action to stop such, um, forgive me, safe sex education to active youngsters? Absolutely. Uh, I think, uh, you know, you if, we're gonna, if we're going to promote more sex by saying, hey, in the schools or wherever, by saying, here's how you do it and this is what you use, then instead of having to worry about 85 cases of AIDS in Canada, we'd soon be worried about 850 cases of AIDS in Canada. The more you promote this activity, obviously, and the more you make it appear as though it's okay, the more the problem we'll face in the years Mr. Ahead. Van Der Zand, I'm as square as you are. Not as square. Well, getting close to square. Well, that's, it's good. It's Go, close to good. square as you are, but I know the panic in many a mother's breast in British Columbia when she thinks of the possibility of children, and we'll get them soon, it's expanding into heterosexual population now in British Columbia, when you've got children with AIDS in school, and when you think of your child as that child, my child were to catch AIDS, it kills. Surely extreme measures are essential nowadays. Well, I think perhaps, uh, hopefully too, we can look to the families and to the parents to play a greater role in all of this as well, and that's probably where it most belongs. You're giving hundreds of thousands of dollars extra to St. Paul's Hospital, where most of these people are dying. Do you really think a back-off, moralistic <coughs> a, approach like yours is practical, or is it only a dream? No, I don't think it's a dream. I think, in fact, it is practical for a good part, yes. I'm not saying that my views totally would necessarily provide all of the answers, but I certainly intend to provide my influence in seeing that what we present is proper. One last question. Public health officers will be free, of course, in their own position to speak out as much as they like about what they regard as the essential education of the public facing this endemic. Again, it's all a matter of how it's done. I realize public, uh, public health officers have a responsibility, as do school boards, as do uh, local governments. But there's much a responsibility with us that represent the whole of the province. Because whatever happens in one area obviously affects the whole of the province or other areas in it. Will you plan now, that for perhaps through your Minister of Education, to lay down guidelines about the type of sex education, or will that be left as it is at the moment? to the individual school board throughout the province? No, I think within the next 60 days, certainly, we need to uh, address this very vigorously and uh, provide some clear direction.
but no use of condoms for demonstration, but you can talk about them in classrooms. Well, I suppose uh, with some caution and dependent on uh, what the group you address and, and how it's addressed, uh, there could be an argument in support of that. But it's something that I would much prefer to comment on after I've had an opportunity to discuss it with all of my colleagues. Thanks, Mr. Premier. Thank you. The reason I went to uh, ask Premier Van der Zandt to see me today, and I met him down in the Hotel Vancouver, was because it looks from, on the surface that there might be a battle royal between he and John Blatherwick, Vancouver Medical Health Officer, because it was put to Premier last night that you, John Blatherwick, wanted to distribute condoms in school. Explain that away. F explain that to me first. Well, the first thing is that I have not even gotten into the school education portion of this discussion. My first priority is to get the education material out to the public that AIDS is a serious problem. We had 100 cases last year, 193 total cases. We have at least 10,000 plus infected people in this province. I now have to start making sure we stop the spread of that virus. But somewhere along the line somebody put, got the wrong idea that you'd suggested distributing condoms in school. People had asked the Catholic School Board reporters from a certain newspaper what they thought about condoms being used in the school. Ah. They responded, then they interviewed Dr. John Blatherwick, then they create a story that transposes things. We need an education program in the school, and you saw Mr. Van Der Zam. I'm quite delighted with what I he's wanted saying. to ask you, what's your reaction to the Van Der Zam approach? He obviously has a very moralistic approach that any detailed sex education would lead to further promiscuity. Right, and that's always been, been the concern that a lot of people have, but I don't think it's right but I think it's a concern. Now, one of the things is I'm not, a pro I'm not an educator. The educator should set up how the education system should be taught. But we use a concept of decisions in many of our things now, for alcohol, for smoking, for drugs. Mm -hmm. We tell students, these are the facts. Don't get forced into it because your friends are doing it. Make a decision. If you make a decision to smoke, don't do it because your friends are. Do it because you know what the facts are. That's a decision for you to make. Now, similarly, what I'm talking about, I would see the education system setting up decisions programs that would involve sex education. Mm -hmm. And part of that would be, if you make the decision to not have sex, then there's a lot of good reasons that we can tell you why, and you don't have to be ashamed that you're doing it. If you make the decision to have sex, then you need to know about birth control. And we've pushed birth control to the nth degree. It's taught all over the place. Not in detail in the schools, only in some schools. In some schools. In, in, in the health curricula, many teachers, many doctors, many nurses go in and teach in relative specific detail because these students won't take things that aren't detailed. And now I'm saying, wait a minute, we got away from telling them there are sexually transmitted diseases. Now, I was telling you earlier that the worry that I've had is we've forgotten about the seriousness of other sexually transmitted diseases. We've let gonorrhea syphilis go by the way. The biggest problem we have right now is chlamydia. My colleagues are telling me that they are culturing chlamydia all over the place. Mm -hmm. Now, but let's not get away from the whole provincial look at the affair. Mr. Van der Zand's attitude seemed to be not too bad at all, a little bit too moralistic perhaps in some way. For instance, do you agree that we can avoid AIDS in our society from here on in by abstinence? Right now, I, well, of course you can. He got you on that one because if we have abstinence, you're not gonna you're not gonna spread the Hardly virus. Hardly a practical <laughs> way to sell it. You're I didn't say do, it was, but you're he not going to do television commercials saying avoid AIDS, <laughs> AIDS kills, avoid AIDS, avoid all sex. But you asked him if, if abstinence would would do I'm it. I'm being serious, <laughs> not lighthearted. You can't okay. take that as if, an educational okay. attitude for the public. That's right. But I'm not picking a fight with the with the premier, and you're not going to get me in a fight I'm with the premier. I'm not trying to get you in I'm a fight saying, with the premier. I'm saying that that what he said was he is in favor of sex education programs. That's what he responded to you. And I am too. He's in favor of it being done properly. I am too. And I don't prefer, profess that I am the expert to tell the education system how to do it. But you're the but expert to people. tell, you're one of the experts who should be telling the public how to do it. And I'm one of the experts who has to tell the public that you either go with celibacy, monogamy, or condoms. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything else in my armamentarium. I mean, I, I'm here as a doctor and we have we talked about lithotripty and things like that. There's an armamentarium of things out there. And what have I got for AIDS? 
prevention. No. And when you come to prevention, what else have I got to say? No medical cures. No cures, no vaccines. All I can say is condoms. Like the Premier, are you offended by the use of condoms as demonstration in the classrooms? not in the right circumstances, done the right way, with the right people doing it, it could be done that way. I'm not offended, personally, and I don't think my child would be offended, and hopefully I did what he says. I've talked to my kids about that beforehand, but a lot of people don't, Jack, and you know that, mm -hmm. and so... Oh, not expect their you know, views. You know, Rafe Mayer did a show from Prince of Wales High School today, and in that show, the kids talked about, they were far more advanced than, than what he wanted to, to be able to get into. These kids want to know some very specific things. You many know, of them know many specific things, but there's got to be an overall public education program That's which right. has to read all levels of community. The Surgeon General of the United States wants the education to start in grade five. That's right. That's what it should and start. 79 of the 83 major school districts in the United States have education programs in place right now. Mm -hmm. 29,000 cases of AIDS in the United States. Everyone will die. Now, we know the score in Vancouver, we've got 90 odd, 100 dead and 100 dying. What are the estimates of people carrying the virus okay. in the sexually active groups? Because if you're carrying the virus, you've recently been sexually active, right? That's right. There's at least 10,000 plus who are HTLV3 positive in this community alone. That's probably very conservative. Right now, however, the number of females in our population carrying the virus is very small. Mm -hmm but it's the same number as we're carrying the fire virus in the gay community four years ago. Now, I'm not suggesting that it's going to expand the same way that it did in the gay community, but I can't take that chance. In the United States, 2.3% of all of their cases are in heterosexual people. Mm -hmm. Now, 2.3% is small, but of 29,000, and it's multiplying, and that's the really frightening thing. Mm -hmm. So five or 10 years from now, one of the real questions to be asked to the medical health officers is not what are you saying now? Why didn't you say this a year ago? Maybe we should have started this a year ago. And I've been suggesting, and I've been getting away from the school side of things, I haven't made my recommendations to city council or the school board yet, and I am about to, but what I've been saying is, look, the federal government has got to take a lead. They've got to get some advertising on it. Britain tripled its budget. To $40 million, right. we have twice as many cases and only $7 million. That's right. And they are showing very specific ads. We need to get the condom manufacturers to be allowed into advertising. They need to advertise on your show. Toothpaste helps our dental public health. Condoms will help I for the future. I think, by and large, it would be the responsibility of the stations themselves and the CBC to decide whether these ads could be done... Um, in a proper tone to be somewhat acceptable. Right, feminine hygiene deodorants. Mm -hmm. They came in, you got a murmur, people complained, and now they're- Were well, you they're pleased to hear uh, Mr. Van der Zam say that within 60 days, one, he's gonna stop the use of these demonstration things in the classrooms, and you approve of that too, don't you? Well, it depends on what demonstration things, things were, were going on. I mean, there were some very good sex education, health education things going on that use some very good techniques. So mm -hmm. I'm not wanting, wanting to wipe them all out. There may be some but extreme ones. Will you, do you think you'll be consulted by the Provincial Health Department on the guidelines he told me he'd bring out within 60 days on sex education, how it should be done, where it should be done. We're talking about the schools and the adult population. I sure hope so. And I hope that we will carry on with further education. I know the Ministry of Health is now, now preparing educational material. The federal government gave the Canadian Public Health Association a large grant to do a massive public uh, education program. So it's going to be started. We've got to get going. He gave me a 60 days. Who could ask for more? If I achieved a 60 day, day goal because I've been speaking out on this thing, wow. And even misquoted on it. And even misquoted. It's a step in the right direction. It's a good step in the right direction. Because AIDS kills. AIDS kills. Calls to Dr. Blatherwick after the break. Do you subscribe to Premier Van der Zam's views that teaching sex, and we'll say in schools, encourages promiscuity? I don't personally believe that teaching sex education in schools increases promiscuity. No, I don't. Well, I think it was good it all came around because we've been promised the guidelines, which you'll be able to chew on, and right. everybody else will be able to chew on within 60 days. Right, I hadn't planned to do anything in 60 days. I was just trying to get well, the don't, public don't, don't forget, some you, knowledge. You weren't for Vancouver City Hall. Right. <laughs> <laughs> 
cheap shot. Yeah, cheap shot. <laughs> well, it's back. You well, I got you on the process. I got you on, on, no, the, you on, the, on the abstinence. That, 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 did not. It's, <laughs> it's fine. When you say it, it's just stupid. <laughs> Go ahead, please. Uh, I'd just like to say that uh, today's youth is uh, a lot more uh, open-minded than they're given credit for, and the uh, morals of the older generation shouldn't be uh, considered here in this issue. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, kids have a right to uh, be educated in our schools. Right to know. That's right. Fair enough. No argument? No argument. Thank you. How old are you? Oh, he's gone. Go ahead, please. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I have to kind of disagree with the next last caller because I think what Van Der is concerned about is the same thing I'm concerned about is how it would, how it would be implemented. Uh, I, don't, I've got some, I don't know what countries, but I was watching Jimmy Swaggart. I'm not a Christian. I happened to see him on TV, and some of the figures he gave about Europe, uh, I think it was Denmark or Sweden or something, they had three or four countries. Um, he said that the unwed young mothers and uh, abortion and even some, uh, some diseases, some sexually transmitted diseases, had doubled, tripled, and even quadrupled in some areas because and they think it was directly related to the way it was implemented. Like I say, I'm not against it being implemented. It doesn't, I don't think Van der Zandt is either. I think he's concerned of how we're going to do it. That's right, and that's, that's the nice part about this discussion is that what we focused on now is the how because even the Premier has agreed that we need to do it, you're agreeing that we need to do it, and I don't profess to be the expert on the how. No. So the how is, as I say, looking at the, the decision-making process, and I think that that would be acceptable to most people in the community. Right. What do you think about us looking at all the other countries that have, uh, that have done such education and well, science, finding out which, which things have worked, which things have shown we probably the, power, the way it was implemented? Wouldn't well, that be a good idea, don't you think? We've got as good an education system as anywhere, and of course we'll look at everywhere. We've been looking at across the country to find out what's going on in Toronto and, and back east in New York. The fact remains is that the, this rising, incurable epidemic is coming on us with an onslaught, and we can't afford to sit and be nice Nellies about it in any way, shape, or form. British Columbia has 69 cases per 1 million population. Mm -hmm. Ontario has 34. So we've got twice as we many. We have twice as many per population. Britain has a massive public education program going on right now, and that's really what I'm advocating. And they've only got, as I recall, something they've like got, well, 500 cases. 653 cases. That's right, and we've got 850 for a smaller population. They tripled their budget to 40 million pounds, and we're plugging along at $7 million. I know. Hoping that it'll go away. It won't go away. It will not go away. No, agreed. Go ahead, please. Mr. Webster? Yes. Yes. Uh, I'd like to get Dr. Blatherwick's opinion possibly about the, uh, the Premier's opinion and his attitude in that he seems to think, the Premier seems to think that if, if children or if students have knowledge about sexual activities, that will in itself promote sexual promiscuity. And I don't think it will because people are going to behave a way that their conscience dictates. And if they have knowledge, it's not going to promote it. As a matter of fact, it'll help them to make a better educated uh, decision. I believe knowledge is the answer, and I've been an advocate of that since I got into public health. And that, of course, is what I'm doing now, is presenting the facts to the community out there, saying those are the facts. You don't have a choice. If you have multiple sexual partners, you're at risk. I'm saying that for the future, for the next five, ten years, the young people of, of our community need to know, too. So we need to develop good programs. We need to develop proper programs. And the other point I want to get across is it's not just Vancouver that needs these programs. These programs need to be sent out around the province. Mm -hmm. Sell it uh, like toothpaste is sold in the way of commercials. Sure. Sell it but the way it... toothpaste is sold in commercials. That's what got the headline originally. Go ahead, please. Good evening, Jack. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole thing seems to be a real, uh, a real can of worms, but I, I basically would like to know if the good doctor actually is naive enough to think that by... Uh, supposedly educating these kids to use a condom that they're actually going to. We're mainly talking about teenagers who are, are obviously going to do something maybe on the spur of the moment or get drunk at a party. And I hardly think in the middle of half drunken uh, ever that they're going to suddenly remember, oh, gee, I better go find one of those little well, condoms. That's why they've got to be educated, is it not? Well, that was one of the things that I got uh, picked off for, too. One of the points I've been making is, yes, they do have to think about it when that drunken stupor. I've been suggesting that females need to carry condoms in their purses because they are at risk once something like this happens, the magic moment occurs and the guy hasn't bothered to take precautions and she says, I happen to have one in my purse. It and she seems really herself. naive. It seems like maybe we ought to be sort of uh, educating them that the magic moment should be uh, something that's, that's 
done with a little bit of commitment and responsibility. Here, 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 oh, here. no problem with that. I agree full heartedly on that, that score, but the facts are that that does not occur. We only have to look at our abortion rates, we only have to look at our teenage pregnancy rates to know that those magic moments are occurring far too often. Uh, oh, uh, if properly done, the uh, AIDS campaign might well reduce promiscuity, multiple sexual partners, the possibility of sexually transmitted diseases, and if properly done, still leave sexuality alone by itself untouched. I think so, because what you're talking about is decision, so you put out that these are the facts, and a person can make a decision then, that I'm not going to have sex with you, because I don't know who all your partners have been, or at least maybe even discuss with you the partners. Mm -hmm. I am not naive enough, though, to believe that a condom advertisement program will do everything. I'm not that naive. It's the only thing we've got now. Go ahead, please. Yes, uh, I wanted to uh, thank the doctor. I could be agree with him completely, but my question was that if the medical system has the ability to test for the AIDS virus in the blood, how come you still hear about uh, people getting it transmitted through the medical system? You don't. Um, we had one case in the hundred that we had last year that was through a blood transfusion. That was probably to a blood transfusion before the time that the screening has gone in. The screening has been extremely uh, successful. The first part of the screening program for the blood transfusion service is to not get high-risk people donating blood. And that's been highly successful. The second part is the actual screening of the blood. So that that is a very, very small route for it to get in the community. Dr. It, Buscott last night put it uh, as about one in a million chances, he said. That's right. I've discussed this extensively with the Red Cross because that's one of the questions I keep getting asked, and it's not a problem. The other nice thing about British Columbia right now is IV drug users are not a problem. I don't know why, but it's probably because syringes are much more available in British Columbia than they are in places where it's become a problem, mm -hmm. and that's another issue that we're going to have to look at. Mm -hmm. oh, oh, sorry, wrong one. Go ahead, please. Yes, Mr. Webster. Yes, sir. How are you today? Fine. Uh, yes, I'd like to put uh, something to Dr. Blatherwick. Dr. Blatherwick, I'm behind you 100%. I give you a pat on the back, sir. Uh, the thing that really scares me is uh, I myself am a sufferer of age-related complex. Now, if at a time before that this all came about, if I had a chance to go into my wallet and pull out, surprise, the condom, I would not even bat an eye in a drunken stupor or anything. I would use it because now I am suffering and I regret it. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed. Go ahead, please. Yes. From Campbell River. Hello. Go ahead. Um, I, too, am concerned about the Premier's tone. He uses the term promiscuity. I've heard this term used to describe everything from any sexual intercourse outside of marriage to multiple partners on the same day, and I wonder at what point he is setting his levels for, for promiscuity, and at what point are we going to start telling our young people that they're being promiscuous if? I think oh. the Premier's standards are well known to the people of this province. I will not pick a fight with him and his standards. I don't think they're that much different than mine, and Jack, you said they're not much different than yours. But the thing is that we still have to get the message out, and it doesn't matter whether it was a controversial issue or what. He's promised a program. I think he'll follow through on that. I think we'll see programs in the school, and I think that's where we have to go. And I'm going to look for the positives in this, and I certainly am not picking a fight with the Premier about his standards. They're his, and he can keep them. But we mustn't uh, allow, or we must fight against, any real, what's the quite word, heavy, heavy moralistic attitudes which prevent any proper education being done at all. That's right, because we can't ignore this. We, we can't be sitting here two years from now with a four or five hundred figure looking at it. What I would rather is in a year's time, you and I be sitting here and you say, Blatherick, you blew it. There's only 20 cases. Where'd they go to? No, it's not gonna happen. no, you didn't blow it. I've, for me, you know, brought up in a day when you never talked about things like this on the air at all. I've done a remarkable amount of stuff on AIDS with right. all kinds of people, and I watch the PBS television whenever they have a series on, because I, without being hysterical, I regard this as the, the great crisis facing mankind today, unless yeah. we control it. Am I wrong? 29,000 cases in the United States, and worldwide there's only 34,000 cases reported. Reported. There's all kinds of countries that still have their heads in the sand saying it's not occurring. 
Well, they have and the we same, know it is. They have the same problem in the States, even though the Surgeon General wants all kinds of messages across the public, the American networks won't move in case it offends a few viewers. San Francisco finally has decided to go with condom ads. Mm -hmm. K-R-O-N TV. Oh. <laughs> it is K-R-O-N, I think, as a matter of fact. Right. Should we do another segment, or we've milked it dry? Oh, we've milked it dry. Eh? Yeah. Because yeah. you got the premium, you can't you can't go from from me to How the premium. How many segments have you and I done just now? Two or one? Two. Went so fast, I didn't know. Thanks, Doctor Blatherwick. We're still on the air. We're still on the air. Yes, yes, oh. yes. Oh, that's how I <laughs> trap people into making silly statements. Oh, sometimes. I was going to tell you a joke. <laughs> no. <laughs> I told them before. Well, I hope you, I hope you're right. I hope you get your message across, and I hope the Premier gets his message across, and I hope we waken up to the menace that it is, and it's not something we can. You know, just brush off and say it'll go away because you people will not find the magic cure for a long time yet. Thank you for your intervention with the Premier. I think that was very important. After the break. Not very keen on Peter Pocklington's politics, but kind of like the fellow. And uh, he will trade Gretzky to the Canucks if the Canucks, or we, will throw in the entire city of Vancouver. But first I start with labor troubles. It can be safely said, Mr. Pocklington, that every union leader in this country hates your guts. Would you <laughs> agree with my assessment of your reputation after the Gainers strike? Well, I don't know why they would, Jack. Uh, one thing I can't stand is someone coming to me and putting a gun to my head and saying, this is your new contract, not interested in negotiation. But you're the man who actually advertised for strike breakers before the plant was closed down. Because they wouldn't talk to me before the uh, strike went on uh, June 1. If they had sat down and wanted to negotiate, as normally free people do in a free society, we'd never had a problem. That was the most violent strike seen in Western Canada probably since the end of the war. 460 people arrested, right? You yes. brought in all kinds of strike breakers. And did you, you won it financially, just, didn't just you? Just a minute now, who, strike breakers. Yeah, strike breakers. Bring any strike breakers in. We bought gentlemen to drive buses so we could get through these lines to get our replacement people back to work. Peter, you would call them workers willing to cross a picket line, is that correct? We hired roughly, in fact, during the full six and a half, uh, half months, we hired 2,000 people to cross picket lines to go to work. And out of that ended up with 850 hardworking people who wanted to keep the jobs. Correct. Well, you call them willing to go to work. Union leaders would call them strike breakers. That's the point I'm making. Ah, Correct. Okay, fair enough. Now, the final settlement. You, you opened the window of opportunity, as I recall, for one day and said, take it or leave it. Is that correct? Well, not necessarily so. We sat down and negotiated for a day, and uh, we found that, uh, strangely enough, we had room to move and uh, we came out with a good four-year contract. Will all the previous employees get their jobs back? M I believe most of them who want them back. So that was one of the provisions yes, in was. your final settlement. That's correct. Now, do you think that this is the way that big business, industrialists like yourself, must go from now on? Set their face against any increases and be prepared to hire those people willing to cross the line during a strike? Jack, in a free society, normally it's wonderful if people could get together without confrontation and negotiate a settlement that was fair to all. Mm -hmm. But an industry in Western Canada at this moment cannot afford to pay 40 to 50 percent more than the marketplace will offer that same labor for. We can't stay in business. We can't remain productive. And we can't compete with the United States. Competition is the name of the game. Competition is the and name of the game. And wages must be reduced to meet the necessary level of competition. So not you can necessarily. Make a profit. Not necessarily. In this case, I offered the uh, the union before the strike the same contract they had for the past two years, and they turned that down. They wanted parity with Canada Packers in Toronto, which we could not afford. Was that three or four dollars an hour more? It was roughly a twenty-seven and a half percent increase over what we had. Uh, in the last two years. The Alberta labor laws are easier to deal with than the BC labor laws, are they not? Oh, slightly. Mm -hmm. Not much different. Now, let's go to your political role, because many people remember you as somewhat an attractive candidate who made a failed bid for the prime ministership, right? What do you think of Mulroney now? Well, obviously, I think I would do things differently, but I think, thank God, Brian's there and not Pierre Elliott Trudeau, the 
who I at one time called a Maoist. He was uh, taking our country so far left, we would end up with a collective state. But your boy Mulroney has completely botched up, in the eyes of many people, the negotiations with the United States, the lumber tariff for a start. Would you not agree with well, that? Well, it's pretty tough when you're dealing with a giant. You basically do as you're told. And the mood of the U.S. Congress was very, very much in the way of protecting American jobs until the November 4th elections were over. Is that what we face, doing what we're told by the American giant, be it on the auto pact or anything else? Well, I think if it comes right down to it, uh, uh, when you're dealing with 240 million Americans who are strictly and of course the largest country in the world economically mm -hmm. uh, it's tough to have an awful lot of your own That's weight. Right. We've got to sing out each eyes and smiling to keep Ronnie happy, is that right? <laughs> I don't think we now, uh, do that forever. You had a tough time yourself during the recent depression and after the early 80s, did you not? How much money a, did you lose in your, I had on your real estate stuff? Well, I lost a lot of money in a lot of things. Uh, the, uh, 100 Nash, million? Uh, close. Uh, the uh, the national energy uh, situation uh, killed the West. Uh, you know, Trudeau and his pals took 90 billions out of Alberta, and you can see the result now, along with lower oil prices. And now they're hammering as the Americans are going to hammer us in natural gas, refusing to accept the transmission charges, right? Well, there's a lot of things that we have to look at. I think the first thing we have to do is get rid of taxation on that particular item and go to a free market uh, uh, transfer price. Across the border? Across anything. Uh, and cut wages and cut costs Not so that we can compete with the Americans? We've got to com we, first of all, we can't have something artificial, whether it be wages or whether it be prices of things. Now let's come to the reason you're in Vancouver, uh, been in Vancouver to speak to the Fraser Institute. And that's a good old Pocklington flat tax scheme, which would be great for people like me. And me and everyone else. Oh, I don't want to be. If it's good for you, I don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> Jack, the people that it helps the most are the folks that make up to $14,000 uh, in income, no tax, period. The first 14000 no tax. Pocklington plan. Pocklington plan. Above that? Above that to 30000 17%, period. In other words, if you make 20000 you pay $1,000 in tax. All right, if you make 100000 what do you, you pay? You pay 20%, roughly. Uh, this is even more generous than the American tax reform. Yes, it is. Which runs around without going into details, what, 27, 28 percent? 28 percent top rate. All I'm saying is this plan of mine is revenue neutral. It brings in the same amount of income as the, this ridiculous plan they have now of 40 to 50 percent and some in, in Quebec 60 percent top rates and allowed to shelter it with MERBs and funny movies and oil deals. You would wipe out all deductions? All deductions. And you bring in the same money in personal income tax? Absolutely right. But, of course, uh, the Liberals, I'm sure you will tell me, absolutely ruined this country with all these comfortable safety nets like unemployment insurance, medical services, commissions, and all that. There's Have many, these got many, to be cut back? Jack, absolutely not. The way to run those particular things is on a, quite frankly, free enterprise basis and pay the premiums for the 10% that can't afford to pay them. Bureaucracies cannot run these situations. You're saying let's go to the British system of private insurance for those who want it. That's exactly right. And I think 90% would want it. Even the doctors in Britain are using the private hospitals. Mm -hmm. Are you going to have another bash of politics? Or were you beaten so badly the last time you won't even chance well, it? Well, actually, I wasn't beaten that badly. I did better than I thought I would do. I made a, uh, I guess, the only fellow on, on the right who had something to say economically. Well to the right. No, not very much well to the right, only economically. I'm pretty much in the middle of the road. Most people say, well, if it's Pocklington, it's got to be right. It's not. I'm very much middle of the road, only right economically. In other words, economics is like religion, hands off. Let um, the natural market look after it. Last question. Uh, would you trade Gretzky to the Vancouver Canucks for any amount of money? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you threw in Vancouver. <laughs> Okay, I've got to have a free for all. What about? It's up to you, I suppose. After the break. I don't really enjoy doing these AIDS information programs, but I don't see how you can avoid them can't stick your head in the sand and pretend it doesn't exist. You just can't do it. So we'll see what comes up on a free-for-all. Go ahead, please. Jack, I'd just like to say that the man you just had on, Mr. Pop Popkinson, is, uh, is someone we'd like to see back in politics. 
I, I've always thought that uh, he's right in the middle. Uh, he's not too far left. He's not too far right. I agreed with everything he did in the West. I think he's a great man. We should get him back into politics. I think he's a very, uh, what's the word, nice guy to deal with, but I didn't like what he did at Gaynor's, I must tell you. That's my old background coming out. I'm afraid that that's the state, and I think he expressed it very well just a few moments ago, that you've got to compete with what's going on. And that's right, and it's the people at the bottom that have got to suffer. I'm just the people at the bottom that have to suffer. I'm suffer. afraid that's the case. I mean, what did, how much did he lose in real estate? A hundred million dollars. And then he had Fidelity Trust. He's willing to put his, uh, his, his, his ideas where his mouth is, right? Fair enough. The one thing I like about it is the flat tax idea. It might work. Good idea. Good. Go ahead, please. Yes, sir. I think uh, Peter Pockington has not had a fair shake in the media. He's not a till of the hun. I think he uh, represents uh, similar ideas to what a lot of us have. Mm -hmm. We want to go very, very far, much farther right wing uh, economically. But uh, I'm not a person who uh, is against uh, some of the social policies we have, like Medicare and uh, taking care of our elderly. I think we should do actually a better job. But uh, this flat tax idea is fantastic. Fantastic idea, but I expect to see an onslaught in unemployment insurance. I hope to have Forge on soon who's got some fairly radical, that they sound like sense, but a lot of people will suffer well, if the Tory government picks up I think anyone before they uh, pick up a UIC check or uh, a welfare check, if they can't find them a job, uh, they should be out uh, doing uh, jobs that don't take away jobs from others, uh, cleaning up the city or whatever. If they can. Well, if they can, if they're not disabled. Fair enough, thank you. Go ahead, please. Ah, you ain't just said a mouthful about them trying to get out and clean up the streets. They don't get paid for it. The city doesn't even hire the ones that they should. But regarding Paulkington, uh, you know, I wish you could have asked when the uh, I had that strike. He was he bought a, a meat packing company down in the states, and he was bringing meat across the border. I don't think that was fair. Another thing, what did he do with the gainers? Uh, old age pension, or at least their pension fund. No, no, the, the, what, they were cut right off, weren't they? At the, no, 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 no. I think what happened was that there was I think there was maybe a court action or not. About and this is common to many companies where the investments in the pension plan exceed the actuarial requirements for the future. And in some parts of the country, you can remove that back into the company's hands. And in other parts of the country, in Ontario at the moment, you can't. I don't know the precise score on the gainer's pension, but uh, who knows? Uh, he settled the strike. He opened the window of opportunity. All the strikers are back now. He says they were. I wonder how true that is, but uh, oh no, it, it's true. Oh, yes. No, that's true. Some of them disappeared, and the, uh, the majority, I think he said 650, are back in the plant. And, Jack, uh, regarding uh, Mr. Van Der Zam with his, you know, he's not practicing what uh, Holland people are for, and that is, you know, they had Peter with his finger in the dike stopping that flood, and I think he should be interested in stopping this before it gets out of control. I give him full credit for his attitude today. He was much more calm and reasoned about it than I might have expected. On I don't that think day. one person like he or his group should be running the, uh, the people. I think I put it, put it well. I don't. I can't see. There's time for a vote. I think uh, Batherwick is right about uh, it's a health situation, and we should take care of it. It was the bl blonic fever or plague or whatever you call it uh, that would have been done. This is a kind of bubonic plague. It is. It's very, very and bad. It has and people to be don't done. realize they think it's only a sexual action. No, 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 no. Through, but it isn't. You can get it from saliva. No, else. no, no, no. I'm not going into all the hysterical fears which are proven or not proven in the question of the AIDS case. It is transmitted in certain pods, certain ways positively. Go ahead, please. Yes, yes. Me? Uh huh. Right, I will. Hello, Mr. Webster. Good evening to you. Good evening. Yes, you're on now. Thank you. I refer to your conversation earlier this evening with Premier Van der Zam about this terrible AIDS business and the use of condoms. Mm -hmm. I wonder, in fact, if I may ask this question, but at least I'll try. Uh, in your opinion, um, has Mr. Van der Zam's religion uh, anything whatsoever to do with, with his overall opinion on this rather terrible situation. Yes, 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 of course it is, because after all, if Mr. Van der Zam were an atheist of some kind, his, and I'm not knocking all atheists, his moral principles might not be so clearly spelled out as they are by his beliefs. And I can well understand uh, his particular opinion. And I, I'm not about to raise it. Uh -oh any particular religion and whatnot, but of course, everybody's opinions are affected by their upbringing and their background. 
I mean, look at me. I was brought up in the wee free Presbyterian church than which there is no squarer, miserable expression of devotion to the Lord in the whole world. It didn't do me much harm, though. Go ahead, please. Hello, Mr. Webster. Yes. I'd like to make two comments, both of which are related and which um, are specifically directed at, I guess, politicians or potential politicians who make comments uh, for which they can never be hold, held accountable. Um, the first one is with respect to Mr. Falklington's comment that he believes in certain policies uh, and has a liberal view towards those, but does not have a liberal view with respect to economic policies. I can't think of a single policy which doesn't have an economic, um, a, a strong economic component. Uh, the second comment is similar in that Mr. Van Der Zem has stated a completely unrealistic and unpractical and unimplementable solution to the AIDS problem in that abstinence or, uh, or, or just by avoiding contact with those people who are likely to suffer from AIDS. Uh, that's just so out of date in our society that um, it, it just doesn't hold any water. And I think it all gets back to our, our um, uh, the way we elected that particular party without having any specifics dealt with at that particular time. No policies, no policies. One of these days the honeymoon with the Van der Zand government will end. If you look at what has been achieved up to now since last August the 6th, it doesn't add up to very much. When I think of the time and the print and everybody else, time in the print and all the other uh, energies expelled on, for instance, Bill Reid announcing a gambling policy, Brian Smith correcting it, Bill van der Zam correcting Brian Smith's gambling policy. When I think of the unnecessary injection of a sensitive issue like abortion into the arena at the moment, when I think of the lack of any job creation, when I think of the lack of an implementation of a promise to put the money we're getting on the 15% tax into job creation, but it's going instead into general revenue. I'm waiting anxiously to see what legislation comes down when the House uh, meets in March. The one thing I want to say positive about Van der Zam is that he said in 60 days there will be guidelines for the teaching of sex education in school, and as in the case of the conflict of interest guidelines, like at the Lumpet, they will be produced. Mm, yeah, I think well, they it, may be produced, but my no, suspicion is that, that, it, that, that they won't be right. Old. But ma'am, both your comments were dead on the mark, and I thank you for taking part in this Friday night fee for free for all, and I shall return after the break. Scheduled for the Webster program on Monday. Oh, oh, oh. Bye bye visit from Glenn Babb, who's been kicking the dickens out of Canada recently. You know, South African ambassador fellow. And I visit the daycare center. Old Grandpa Webster goes to the daycare center. I want to talk to Maggie Mitchell, the NDP member for Vancouver East, about daycare. That's all I've got planned for the moment. You never know what's going to happen over the weekend anyway, but although I tried to keep to whom I've told you about. 5 p.m. precisely, stay tuned for Tony. The Vancouver province seems to have a feeling that we love taking people's children. It's the last thing we want to do. They're far better off in the home if they're safe. We've got time for some telephone calls to see if you're being arrogant, bureaucratic, unsympathetic, totally bloodless. You don't care this man is to rip out the inside of his house, and there's no way you're going to prosecute illegal suites except in the odd flagrant case. <laughs> What's your position in the shadow cabinet? Education? Post-secondary Post education. Post-secondary education. Yep, yep. And all your degrees are legitimate. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mail away little, for them. Little private joke. <laughs> no, but you said they begged the money on the street. Yeah. They, they begged it on the street. That's free enterprise. <laughs> <laughs> Would you trade Gretzky to the Vancouver Canucks for any amount of money? <laughs> Maybe if you threw in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs>